Well, good morning, friends. I don't know if it's going to be morning for you um, or what time you'll watch this, but I'm I'm just in the RV right now, and I really want to start sharing a little bit more some of the things that the Lord is putting before me. Um, this walk that He has me on is just in, it's incredible, and what He is doing on the channel again is incredible. In fact, I was just reading a devotion where two or three are gathered; there He will be in your midst. He is in our midst. And we don't have to be in a church building for the Lord to be in our midst. I, I, I hope you really all understand that. That's one of the things that he showed me this morning through the devotional and through his scripture, that scripture. It was very specific. It didn't say anything about where where we need to be, even together, at, physically, Wherever we gather, even if it's on the internet, on the phone, if you're with another brother or sister, he will be in our midst. So right now, as you watch this short little word that I'm going to share with you, he's in our midst. He is here. So um, just real quickly, grab your Bibles, whatever version you have. I'm just going to read it out of um, the ESV because it's easier for most people to understand. I, the Lord brought me to James um, 5, 1, and I, and I know many of you have read this before. It says, um, be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth being a patient being patient about it until it receives the early and late rains you also be patient establish your hearts for the coming of the lord is at hand do not grumble against one another brothers so that you may not be judged behold the judge is standing at the door and the Holy Spirit had me stop here and, and, and he convicted me to just share this briefly with you because I'm reading this and um, so many of us, we are, we are in a place of suffering. I read these comments every day. I pray for people every day. There's many of us who are in a place of suffering and this really gives us guidance, doesn't it? If you really think about it, the Lord is, is, is telling us, I want you to set your eyes on that farmer. Think about the farmer and, and how, how, you know, he is dependent on the rain, the early rains and the late rains to, to produce that fruit. And being anxious about it ain't going to get it done. Being troubled about it ain't going to change the fact that he can make it rain. He can make that fruit grow. And the Lord is really telling us, ourselves, be like the farmer. He is so dependent on me, the rain. You know, I see the Lord as being the rain, our rain that sustains us, that feeds us, that gives us the living water. And he's He's trying to, to show us and, and, and teach us that be like that farmer. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And, and, and that's the other thing that he wants us to keep our, our eyes on. I'm doing a, a study called The Adventures and Prophecies, and it's about end times. And I'm telling you, my friends, it is so powerful. We are living in the end of time right now. We are the clay feet in Nebuchadnezzar's uh, prophetic dream, which has already um, been fulfilled. Every, every um, kingdom that he, that he prophesies about has come to pass, has come true. The gold, the silver, the iron, it's all come to pass. It's incredible. Just like uh, Daniel had predicted so many, 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 many years before, before it even unfolded. And now we're in the clay and feet stage. So we need to stay awake. We need to be diligent. It's so important. Don't get your eyes off of, don't, don't take your eyes off of Christ and what's really happening. Um, the Lord is coming back. And he's going to be standing at the door. And he's going to be coming to judge also. 
So this is not a time to be grumbling and arguing with family members, with friends. This is not a time to, to, to turn against other people. As, as, as people who are supposed to be faithful to the Lord, we have to, at this time, be faithful, trust Him, keep our eyes on Him, and really walk obediently and love each other. Uh, I haven't read my commentary yet, but it's always, this book has usually really nice commentaries. And, and, and I only read it when, when the Holy Spirit guides me to, because the, 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 the Lord, the Holy Spirit will unravel what, what he's saying and apply it to my life. But it is, it does say, and this is, um, I, I want to read it just to elaborate a little bit on these verses. Patience and suffering. The attention turns from rich to poor, from the evil oppressors to the righteous, oppressed from presumption to patience. Rather than fighting back, they are called to be patient, endurance, and to trust in God to vindicate them. The righteous are to wait until the coming of the Lord, when he will right all wrongs. The late and early rains describe the Palestinian climate in which the autumn rains occur just after sowing the spring rains, just before the harvest. Even though three-fourths of Palestine's rain fell from December to February, these two rains were the most critical. And then the part where it says, do not grumble. Uh, it can be particularly painful in times of suffering when people explode in frustration and turn upon each other. That's That's a good point. You know, when we are sick, we don't feel good. We we're walking through a really serious diagnosis. We're dying, right? Um, it can become very hard, very frustrating. There are people around us who want to, some of them really generally want to care for us, but um, it can rub us the wrong way sometimes. Sometimes we just want to be left alone. Sometimes we don't want to do what they say when they're trying to help us. You know, um, it's sometimes hard to be in a position of sickness. And not everybody is perfect with how they help either. We really are called not to grumble during those times. Please remember that, that the, the people that do come to you, if, if you have anybody... Uh, don't be so harsh on them. Be gracious. And remember that they're, they're really just trying to help. If you have family members that, that, you know, they're doing things that you don't agree with. And I've had, had people tell me stories about their family and they get frustrated and they don't want to talk to their sister. They don't want to talk to their brother or their aunt said something about their sickness and they, they told everybody in the whole family or, um, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a daughter who's being bossy and she's taking, taking over everything. And I just want to be left alone. What is the Lord saying about that? Right. We need to stop walking in the flesh and stop walking in our in in our sickness and allowing it to control our emotions and get back to God's word. Get back to God's word. So that's a that's a um a Bible devotional minute for you friends this morning. I just wanted to put that up and I don't care if only one person watches it. If it feeds um if it feeds somebody, amen, right? Amen. All right. God bless you, friends.